Hi, welcome to Close Up with the Sunday News. We're here today with State, Rep state Representative John Baer, uh, who is a co-sponsor of House Bill 11, which would privatize the state store system here in Pennsylvania. All right, well, thanks for being with us today, our Representative Baer. Uh, give us a brief thumbnail explanation of why you're a co-sponsor of Pennsylvania House Bill 11, which would privatize the wholesale and retail operations of the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board. Well, House Bill 11 is trying to do here something we've tried in the past but failed, and that is, like you said, to privatize the uh, wholesale operation and retail sale of liquor and wine in Pennsylvania. And I'm, I'm supportive of it because it just makes good sense. I mean, we're one of only two completely controlled states in the nation, us in Utah, that do it this way. And there's about 18 other states that have some involvement and some capacity, and everyone else is completely privatized. And doing it for a couple of reasons. One, um, it gets us out of a conflict of interest in that right now Pennsylvania is involved in the uh, marketing, the selling, the regulation, the taxation, and enforcement of liquor laws. Some could argue that's a conflict of interest. Two, by selling this, we will be getting out of the people, pension, and storefront business and focusing really what our true intent of or what we should be doing as a government is the taxation, regulation, and enforcement part. And while we're doing that, we'll save some money long term. Um, third, we're not going to lose any money. In fact, I think we might actually increase revenue over time because we'll have more locations, we'll have better selection, better competition, a better convenience for customers to purchase wherever they want to purchase. And uh, for this, under this bill, you're looking at doubling the, a little more than doubling the retail uh, locations and going from maybe three wholesale to up to 30 wholesale. And I think it's consumer selection and choice is an important thing. But lastly, uh, this, there's, no, uh, argue, there's really no good evidence saying that if you're privatized, this is going to increase, increase bad behavior, whether it be DUIs, underage drinking, what have you. Uh, states that are privatized are no better or worse than, than we are in Pennsylvania. In the past, uh, proposals to sell the state store, uh, state store system has generated counter arguments uh, that say, as you just said, privatized liquor sales will mean greater levels of alcohol consumption, mm -hmm. underage drinking, and public safety concerns, and also that selling the system would displace thousands of Pennsylvania workers who now make a decent wage with good benefits working for the state store system. How do you respond to those arguments? Well, let me address the first part that I think it, you know the one that concerns me the most, and it is a fair question: is what do you do with those workers that are in the system? It's not their fault that the system's an outdated business model. Uh, we're trying in this bill to find a way to transition them. If we were to pass it, we want to give them uh, tuition credits to go back to school, or a ca I should say cash, give them uh, a leg up in terms of getting another government or state sector job. Um, and we want to treat them fairly. But just because we do have those number of employees doesn't mean we should forever stay in this business model, which again, you don't see 48 other states knocking down our door to get in this uh, business model. So we got to go there and address it. Um, in terms of you know, the other where the hurdles have been is one, the argument's always been you don't kill the goose that laid the golden egg. Um, well, that's true. We're not killing the goose that laid the golden egg. The revenue that we get primarily is from the taxation of liquor, and that taxation will still be there whether we own the stores and, the, and hire the people or we don't. So there's no discernible um, difference in terms of revenue. In fact, I'd argue down the road, if we're not involved with the people, pension, and storefront side, we'll save money. Plus, we'll have a huge one-time upfront uh, pot of money of anywhere from $1.1 $1 .1 to $2 billion, depending on who you're talking to, that can be used for infrastructure, for pension, you know, our pension obligations. It can be used for a lot of good things. So I think economically it makes a lot of sense. And the last thing is, there's a lot of social conservatives and people here in Lancaster County that support liquor privatization. It's different than what most people think. And in fact, we have Pennsylvania Action, which is about to endorse House Bill 11. And uh, I've gotten overwhelming support. And last thing I'd like to throw out there, we did a, a recent town hall here with the leader, Mike Turzai, and a few of my colleagues in Linden Hall. Uh, we had the uh, local union, Wendell Young, and the uh, UFCW uh, Local 1776 come to this meeting. And after that meeting, they ran attack ads on me for two weeks on FM and radio, or actually FM and AM, saying, why does John Bear want to increase your taxes? Please uh, call his office and tell him we don't want privatization. And what's happened is we had 149 calls, 143 support liquor privatization, uh, six did not. So that tells you a lot about central Pennsylvania. Um, let's talk a little bit about the impact of privatization on consumers. The Corbett report noted that if the state were to cease taxing liquor the way it does now and switch to a gallonage tax, uh, in order to generate the same amount of revenue, the gallonage tax would have to be the highest in the nation for wine and the 14th highest for liquor. Do you believe consumers will pay less for liquor in a privatized system, or given the need for the state to generate liquor revenues, will they see much of a change at all? I think um, going to the gallonage tax is what most states do. Uh, what we did was to hold it harmless, so no one could say we are cutting our revenue to the state. Um, what that will mean is some things will be lower, some things might be the same. I do believe long term when you have many more vendors competing, 
um, and we don't have all the markups the way it's set up right now, you will see less uh, price reduction, slight price reductions, because just pure competition. Uh, right now, when you buy um, a bottle of wine, you pay $1.50 for the bottling handling charge. You pay a 30% markup. You pay 18% uh, Johnstown flood tax plus the 6% sales tax. We're getting rid of everything but the 6% sales tax, and some of that is, you know, going to be obviously uh, markup for the vendor. Um, but they can compete and and price, you know, like a free market operates. And I think it will create better selection and better prices. And worst case scenario, it might be the same, but at least the stores will be a little bit more unique the way they're set up, they'll be more customer driven, it won't be a monopoly. And I think all of us want, you know, if you believe in free markets, that competition will, will spur innovation, creativity, and better customer service. Do you think we're ultimately going to see, say, larger stores with more selection? Uh, you do see some of those in places like Delaware. Yes. So, and we have, uh, in the bill right now, the way it's written, you have two classes. You have type A class uh, license, which is over 15,000 square feet. So that could be your giant store. It could be your big box retailer. Uh, and they have to have a separate section of the store to do this. Or you can see it much like it is today, a smaller store, it's under 15,000 square feet, but they're going to have freedom to do what they want to do and respond to their customer demands. And I think that would show, uh, you know, the thing at the end of the day, it could look very different than what it looks like today. Okay. Uh, right now, the PLCB uses a statewide computer inventory system to track the number of bottles sold against sales tax collected. How would the state monitor and enforce tax collection and reporting from private retailers? Well, I think the current ERP system they put in, which they spent quite a bit of money on, that would, that would have to change. Um, I'm not sure the exact, it's a good question, I don't know, that I don't have the right answer on that because I, I need to learn a little more about how they're going to track it, but, you know, needless to say, we're going to have to be tracking it like anyone else would, and, and just from uh, tax receipts, we need to know what's being bought or, and, uh, and sold. Okay. Um, and lastly then, polls show a majority of Pennsylvania support privatization, but there's been a suggestion this bill could get lost in the shuffle this year with other issues like the natural gas drilling fee taking precedence. Do you think privatization will make any headway this year? And if it does, do you think you can overcome the sort of ambivalence expressed by Senate President Pro Tempore Joe Scarnati, who seems lukewarm on the idea? So, great question. Here's what I'd say to that, is when you have the House leader that wants liquor privatization and the Senate leader that really wants Marcel Shell and school vouchers, uh, some of this will get done. And I even go a step further. When you have Marcel Shell and liquor privatization, things are both very popular with the public, and you have two leaders that want them, it's a win win. It's a win win. So I know there's obviously politics between the two chambers, but at the end of the day, I would think they'd be foolish not to get this done because that's what the people want. Okay. Thanks, Rep Bear. We appreciate your time Thank you. today.